Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel of crafting, crochet and knitting. My name is Nikki and welcome to my little universe. So hello, welcome, welcome back if you are a returning viewer. I hope you're enjoying these videos. You can find all of my content underneath the playlist for Nikki's Universe 2020, 2021 and 2022. So, what have I been up to? Um, my crafting has been a little bit on and off because life has been quite busy at the moment but I have been able to do a few things and I've collected some of them together to chat about today. One thing you might have noticed is that we have new cushions behind me um, or rather old cushions that now have tassels. So <laughs> for those of you who missed it at Christmas I was raving about this tassel maker that my husband tried to get me and unfortunately there was something wrong with it and we had to return it and we didn't know if we were going to be able to replace it and a couple of weeks after Christmas I did come across one and managed to pick that up uh, and I've used it to make just some little tassels nothing extreme because this is very chunky yarn uh, just some little tassels to finish off these cushions so I'm going to pop that back up on the shelf there. I just felt like I needed to get rid of the autumnal toned cushions and bring out something a little bit more spring-like because even though we are still technically in winter the weather has been beautiful recently. I actually am really annoyed that I didn't manage to record in the day and catch some of the beautiful sunshine that we've been having but never fear I've got my trusty light on the side helping to make things just that little bit clearer for you all because I know that when I'm sat in the dark uh, some of my darker coloured yarns don't particularly look very nice <laughs> so hopefully this will be helping. Um, the main thing that I started, no, not the main thing that I started, there was something else I finished as well. I need to put a picture up now. And that picture is of the completed Granny Square Blanket for my mum. I gifted it to her already, it's on her sofa right now, so you can see how it matches her sofa. I'm really pleased with it. I did one final border. Um, if you didn't catch it, I did a border tutorial. I think it was last week, if not the week before. So do go and check that out if you're interested on how you can go and border around a granny square blanket um, without there being too much of a um, too much of an obvious join across where you join to granny squares. That made no sense. It makes more sense in the tutorials. Go check it out if you're interested in granny square blankets. So that is something that I finished recently and that meant that I moved on to another project which was my blue jumper. Now, you know what I'm like with jumpers. <laughs> um, can we remember the red cardigan fiasco? How many attempts did that end up being? Six? Seven? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> Me and jumpers are not getting on. I quite frankly don't know how I made this jumper because this jumper's great. Like it's a little bit big, I think mostly because I overestimated my size slightly, but I really like this jumper. I love the yarn I used it with, I love the pattern. I only made a couple of mistakes and they're hidden on the back of the work. Um but yeah, I like this is a really good fit. I don't know how I made this because this was the first attempt. Every other jumper that I've made myself has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and if you don't believe me, I'm going to insert a clip of me from the other night where I was catastrophizing over frogging back my jumper yet again. So uh, I'm going to roll that clip. <laughs> Hello. So sorry for the lighting. It's not the best in the world. I am currently just lying in bed trying to keep warm, <laughs> feeling very low energy. Uh, working on the start of a sweater pattern so this might not look like much of the yoke has been done but uh, I've actually frogged this back twice now which means that I've knit this particular part of the jumper tw uh, three times already um, which is why it's been taking so long and uh, if you don't believe me um, let me just show you <laughs> all the frog back yarn so again if that doesn't look like much here's my hand <laughs> it's a lot of yarn um i actually finished the yoke uh and then tried it on and realized it was way too big so that's how come there's so much yarn there um so this is to use up the so crafty aaron um, that I have in petrol blue 
so yeah, I started again. Um, I had to do some maths to try and calculate how to get the right size neckline, but then downsize by the time I get to the rest of the torso. Um, so I think that once we're past that, hopefully it will fit better. Um, and yeah, I just thought I would check in and mention that a good thing to note if you frog back is to try and keep um, like a loose, a loose um, loop when you frog back. So I think the temptation would be to try and rewind your yarn. Um, and okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. But I've found in my second attempt at this yoke that the twist of the yarn was actually um, changed direction part way through the yoke um, from where I would frogged back and then it changed direction again from where I got back to the fresh yarn in the ball. So this time when I frogged back I kept all this yarn nice and loose and I'm just trying to keep it as loose as possible um, and trying to make sure that it doesn't get too tight so you can kind of see it's it has been trying to get like this, it's been trying to like rewind itself um, and twist, sorry, not rewind, trying to twist itself a lot and I'm just sort of throwing it like that to kind of remove that tension because if you get too much tension it's really obvious um, in the work, it becomes really obvious because it slopes in a different direction. So hopefully you can see that this is all now nicely in the right direction. Um, I haven't done anything like this before so um, there are bits of the making stitches and the short rows that are visible but I don't think it's a bit dark there because of the shadow I don't think it's so bad um, definitely better than some of my previous attempts so now we're just hoping that we do in fact have to outsize because I'm going to be really upset if it's not, and this might end up in the naughty corner. <laughs> I might have a tantrum and put it in the naughty corner. So, um, yes, wish me well. Wish that I uh, do manage to do my calculations correctly and uh, formulate this yoke. So, yeah, frogged it back twice already. Let's hope the third time is the charm and we don't end up with another seven attempt jumper. Um, so I do have the yarn still bundled up because I haven't made much more progress. Um, what I have done, or oh, how best to show you this. Let's detangle a moment. There we go. Um, don't quite know what's happened here. Yes, I do. There we go. Right. Well, I detangled. So, so, I've got more yarn frogged back than I have in the knitted work. Honestly, I'm not detangled. There's actually a knot. Uh, sorry about this, folks. Um, okay. Oh, I'm dealing with that later. Um, so, yes, here is what I've got so far. So, not a lot. Um, basically, how I've had to adapt the pattern. Adapt? Adapt? adapt the pattern is my neckline needs to be bigger than the pattern that is um, suggested for my uh, for my bust size um, so most patterns will go with the bust size for an idea of what your torso should be um, my arms are much bigger than that suggested pattern and so is my neck so I've used the neckline for a bigger size um, what was the pattern it's a free pattern I think it was called something like the Cumberland Yoke Sweater. It's a Yarnspirations design. Um, and so I've got some Aran or worsted weight yarn to do this with. I did the neckband for the size pink, which is actually the 5XL pattern, um, which is slightly demoralising, but what can you do? I'd like to breathe. Uh, <laughs> and then what I've done is I've recalculated every time that I increase by making stitches so that the first one is in pink and then the next one is shifting from the pink size to the purple size which is something like the 3XL and then the next one jumps from the purple size to the blue size which is the 
2, is it XL slash 2XL? Um, I think the sizes kind of cover a wide range. So I'm now back down to the pattern size that I think I'm going to need for my chest. Um, however, I've done some measurements of my gauge and I already know that the size that they separate off for the arms is too small. And the size they separate off, separate off for the body looks like it's way too big. So I am going to have to probably just shift some extra stitches onto the arms. I will keep you informed about how that goes. But for now, I've got to make my way further down this pattern. Um, now, if you do know the pattern, recognise the pattern, you'll notice that I don't have any colour work in this. The pattern is colour work. I only wanted it for the sizing. Um, I don't want to attempt colour work yet. This is my trial run to get the sizing of my jumper right and know what my fit is because, as I said, I've had so many problems with jumper sizes and how they've been scaled, they don't fit. I just want a plain jumper where I work out how it is for my size. But I do want a little bit of pattern on this. So when I get to the main bulk of the colour work, I'm going to do a welted leaf um, texture around the yoke. So I'm nearly there again. That's where I got to last time before I had to frog it back. Um, and I will keep you posted on how this goes. I was really hoping that I would have made more progress, but when, when I've made it up to the whole yoke twice already and had to frog it back, I, I'm i sorry, but I, I only have so many hours in the day and it's obviously not got any further than this. Um, so I will keep you posted. Um, so seeing as that is how the project has been going right now, oh, I totally forgot. I did make another project and I've packed it away already so I haven't got it out. Remind me to show you in another video but I did make another baby blanket. <laughs> like I don't even have kids and I have about 10 different baby blankets currently sat upstairs just because I love trying new stitches and new yarns and it's a really simple thing to do. That's what I did when I got frustrated at the jumper and I needed to break. Um, and then the other thing that I did when I needed a break from the jumper was to just look at my yarn stash and see how that's progressing. So the baby blanket that I made, did I say blanket or jumper? I made a baby blanket. I'm, I'm so tired, I'm sorry. This is not a brilliant video. I could re-record it, but I just, oh, I can't even. <laughs> So you're getting real Nikki today, like the mask has been thoroughly removed. Um, so yes, I made the baby blanket with some chunky yarn that I had in my stash. I'll show you that when I show you the blanket. So I did make a little bit of a dent there. And then I realised that my advent yarn was still sat in a bag, like on top of my work bookcase. And <laughs> I hadn't decided completely what I want to do with it yet. I haven't put it on the shelf properly. It's not going to fit on the shelf anyway. So I got it out and this is not all of the yarn. So it filled this tote bag or this organza bag when I first had it. Um, and I've already taken some colours out. I will show you those in another clip in just a moment. But I did decide what I wanted to do with four of these colours. So I have 10 colours in total because each, um, the yarn came from a pack, or rather the yarn came from two packs. One was a So Crafty Neutrals pack from Aldi, and the other was a So Crafty Seasonal uh, from Aldi. And they each had five colours in there, and each ball was 50 grams, and there was two of each colour. So I've got ten colours in total. That was a really long way, a winded way of letting you know that. <laughs> And I was looking at what I had left after I moved some colours that I decided I wanted to add to a project I already had on the go. And I was left with a lot of browny grey shades. And I really don't think the browns and the greys go together that well. So the first thing I kind of did was like split those off. So there's the sort of the more grey tones and the sort of tan brown. And then I was left with the green, which kind of went okay with these tones. Um, and I was left with the red, which really kind of didn't go that well with anything. And then I thought, huh, green and red, what does that remind us of? <laughs> and I, I felt like, okay, but together these two colours don't particularly go, like, brilliantly. This red looks really bright in this lighting. I can assure you it's not quite that bright, but it is a very bright red. It comes from the seasonal pack, and the green is also quite muted because it comes from the neutrals pack. So together they do look quite odd. 
apart from the fact that they're Christmassy. So I thought, okay, but do I have anything where I can tone down that red and still keep the Christmassy vibe? And I think, on the one hand, you might think, okay, well, winter, you know, I could get the greys out and put that with it. Uh, but actually, that's when I realised that the holly colour is very, very much the warmer side of Christmas. So, you know, in a classic Christmas scene where you've got all that grey and white and frost, and then you've got that spark of colour, you've got that horry berry tree or that wreath on the door or that, you know, Christmas red post box. And it's those that really make you feel very warm and cosy compared to all the grey and the white of the snow. And what else made me feel warm and cosy in this pack was the tan and the browns. There's actually two browns. There's the brown from the seasonal, which has this sort of red tone to it, and the brown from the neutral. And now I'm looking at it, they go quite nicely together. <laughs> but that's not the plan. Um, and I thought, okay, this is very hot chocolate or cookie dough and gingerbread-like, and just made me think of you know, baking and warmth, and I thought that would make a much better colourway with the holly tones. And now that they're together, hopefully you agree with me that that red is toned down a lot, and part of my decision to go with the neutral brown instead of the seasonal brown is because I felt like the seasonal brown didn't really tone down the red as much as the neutral brown did. So I think even though these three colours look quite nicely together, the red looks out of place. Whereas when I take the neutral brown, the red is still out of place, but it's more out of place in an obvious and deliberate way. Like the red is the holly berry spark of colour and then the rest are, you know, trees and chocolate and cookie dough and evergreen. So I hope you like that. I hope you agree that that's a really nice colour combination. So I've got two of each of these because these are 50 gram balls. And that leaves me with some greys. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with yet. But that is more than half of my advent yarn has been dedicated towards projects. Now, I've just shown you the colourway. I haven't said what project I have in mind for this. I have been wanting to make some Christmas stockings because I've made a Christmas blanket now and I've made a tree skirt um, and I just feel like the next thing on my list is some stockings um, to decorate the house with. So yes, that's the plan for these. I just think as well that as long as I can find the time, it would be really nice to take yarn that I got for Christmas 2021 and turn it into a project for Christmas 2022. So that's the plan. Um, and now that I have a plan for it, I don't feel quite so guilty about the fact that it is still um, in my stash. I will get round to it, but now that I know what it's going to be, it's not just this abstract set of yarn on my shelf that's taking up space, it's that's the project that I'm going to do at some point. And so if I get to the point where I'm stuck for a project, even if it's the middle of summer, I can pull this out. But let's face it, I have a lot of yarn on my shelf, I don't think I'm going to be stuck for a project. <laughs> So I think that possibly autumn I'll start looking at making that uh, into stockings. I don't yet know whether I'm going to knit them or crochet them, so if you have some of your favourite Christmas stocking patterns, do let me know what they are in the comments down below so that I can go and hunt those out and find one that I want to make those yarn colours into. So that is most of the advent yarn. There is some advent yarn that I have also put together um, into a different project and I recorded a clip earlier when the lighting was much better so I'm going to insert that in here now but bear in mind that I hadn't like recorded the rest of this video at that point so hopefully I've said everything I need to say in that video or I've remembered what to say <laughs> when we come back after watching that clip um, but yeah this clip is what I've done uh, what I've done with the rest of the yarn. So hopefully some of you can remember me sharing little clippets of my autumn blanket. So at the moment they're just kind of a collection of diamonds, they all need blocking. <laughs> they're just stored in this organza bag here in roughly rainbow order because I kind of want to see overall what everything looks like together. 
excuse the focus, um, what everything looks like together because I was feeling like there were too many deep tones in the blanket. Now, um, there are some extra balls in here at the moment, so I think this is looking about right now, but previously, these colours here were quite bold, the greens were quite dark, and these went in there originally, so you can kind of see the whole blanket was kind of quite dark, and there wasn't a lot of orangey yellow tones in the mix. I got this one from a yarn shop in Abingdon? I think that's right. I did a video on the... Um, on the yarn shop that I went to, it's called Mason's, um, I remember that much, <laughs> um, I did a video on that, um, and I got some other yarn, and that was one that I had been looking for, that kind of tone of orange for ages, um, and now I'm so happy that my advent yarn includes this sort of peachy orange, this bright orange, and this bright yellow, these are quite similar, except that this is like muted, and this is bright, um, but I think having that peach in there kind of helps transition a lot, Okay, it probably is going to be quite a lot of orange, but it's an autumn blanket. That's what I wanted. So now when I look at it, I see these like orange tones, much more vibrant and much more dominant within the blanket. Um, and so I'm hoping that that will bring the color balance back to something more autumnal and not something that's really pink or purple. Because even though you get some beautiful, beautiful plants that turn into these shades of claret and pink and purple in the autumn and they're gorgeous, they are few and far between. And I think what makes them nicest is that they are the rarer ones and the rest of autumn is very much the brown, the orange, the yellow, some darker green. So... Yeah, I want to shift that balance back to something like slightly more realistic. So, what do you think? Do you like all three of these colours in the mix? I hope so. Um, and that is what I've done with three of the colours that I got out of the ten colours that I got for Advent. So, there we go. Hopefully you think that they look nice together. I, I picked out those two oranges and the yellow from the seasonal collection and thought that they would make an excellent addition to my um, autumn blanket that is still in progress. I think that we are pushing year two on that blanket. There have been several setbacks. There was a shade of orange that I thought if I just had this shade of orange maybe it would be better and then I got that and tried it and it just wasn't enough. It was definitely an improvement but I still need more orange. Now we have the Aldi yarn from Advent um, and it looks so much better so hopefully when I've worked those up it will be ready to go. Um, but then I have to block it and I don't have blocking equipment. So... <laughs> Most things that I make I don't need to block really realistically um, and so these though they're diamonds and they're stockinette diamonds and they're curling horrendously and even if I can't re-block them when I wash the blanket at a later date at least if I block them before I sew them together then hopefully it won't be curling as much. I hope. So that's also something I need to do. I need to get hold of blocking materials for that. Um, but yeah, sorry about the sporadic nature of this video. I'm quite tired. I'm recording after work. That was clearly a bad idea. Um, <laughs> and I just, I've been making stuff and feeling like I haven't been letting you know what I've been up to. So um, yeah, I just wanted to check in. Um, hopefully next week's video will be a little bit more um put together <laughs> a little bit more logical i don't know i'm thinking of maybe doing a sewing video again soon because i really want to make some notions pouches um and i need to have a practice run so maybe you can join me for that um or i've also remembered that i did promise to uh show you my first attempts at doing lace and beadwork and crochet so i could also do those videos next i'm not quite sure yet um, I still don't know what project I'm going to do with the box 29 from Crochet Society so do let me know in the comments if you have any ideas if you haven't seen that video go back and check that video out and let me know what you think I should make with that yarn oh, so many ideas in my head so much going on and no time to do it <laughs> so yes anyway I hope that you have at least enjoyed this video even if you've just been laughing at me in my very tired sporadic state um and I hope that, that doesn't put you off watching the next one where I do promise that I will be a lot more put together um so yes with that I'm gonna go grab a cup of tea and I'll see you in the next video bye for now everyone